Hi everyone, over the last couple of videos, we took a deep dive into XML and JSON. Two key data formats you absolutely need to know if you are working in software development or network automation. Today, we are building on that foundation by taking a closer look at YAML, another really important data format you are likely to use a lot, especially if you're working with tools like Ansible or cloud platforms. We will walk through what YAML looks like, how it's different from XML and JSON, and why it's often the go-to choice for so many automation tasks. Take your time, follow along, and by the end, you will have a strong understanding of how YAML fits into the bigger picture. So YAML stands for YAML Aren't Markup Language, which funnily enough shows a little bit of the humor from its creators. Originally, YAML stood for yet another markup language, but they changed it because they wanted to make it clear YAML isn't meant to mark up documents like HTML. Instead, it's designed specifically for storing and exchanging structured data in a way that's both easy for humans to read and easy for machines to parse. It was first developed in the early 2000s thousands. At the time, there was a growing frustration with how complicated XML was getting. XML was powerful, but it was also bulky, hard to read, and just too much for simple configuration tasks. So the goal behind YAML was to create something simpler, cleaner, and more readable, especially for things like configuration files, where humans often have to write and maintain the content. One thing that makes YAML really stand out is that it relies heavily on indentation. Unlike JSON, or XML, where you have lots of brackets or tags or braces, YAML is all about structure through spacing. In addition to this, YAML doesn't have quotation marks unless you need them and no closing tags. It's very intuitive once you get used to it. YAML is especially popular in automation and DevOps. Tools like Ansible, Kubernetes, Docker Compose, and even some CI CD pipelines use YAML extensively because of its human friendly design. If you are writing playbooks, defining cloud infrastructure or managing application deployments, chances are you are working with YAML. And this is important. YAML isn't perfect because it's indentation sensitive. A small mistake like an extra space can break everything. It's also a little more flexible in how it parses different types of data, which can sometimes cause confusion if you are not careful. So even though it's simpler in design, you still have to be mindful when writing it. Now that we know what YAML is and why it exists, let's talk about how YAML actually looks. In the network automation, YAML is often used to define device configurations or inventory data, or maybe playbooks or API payloads. So instead of hard coding everything in scripts, we can store data neatly in YAML files and have our automation tools like Ansible or Python scripts to read from them. So first things first, let's talk about YAML structure and syntax. The most important thing to know is that YAML is indentation based, meaning the structure depends on how things are spaced. Typically, we use two spaces to indent each level. The dash sign you see at the start of the line that's used to represent a list item. Kind of like in Python when you have a list of dictionaries and whenever you see a colon, that usually introduces a key value pair. Now, let's go through the YAML example line by line. There are a couple of plays here, as you can see on the screen. We are kicking off a new play here. The dash means this is the first item in a list, in this case, a list of plays or tasks. The name is just a description for us human, something that tells us what this play is about. The hosts, this tells Ansible which devices it should target. In this case, it's all devices under the Cisco underscore routers group in your inventory file. Now, let's move down by one line where we see the gather underscore facts that is set to know. Normally, Ansible tries to collect system facts before doing anything. But with network devices, we usually don't need that. And it just slow things down. So we turn it off. Okay, so with that being said, let's move into the tasks. And this starts a list of tasks where we want Ansible to run. Each task will be defined underneath it. So here is our first actual task. Again, 
then the dash marks it as a list of items on the tasks. This task is going to configure the description on a router interface. The iOS underscore config here, we are using Ansible's iOS underscore config module. This one is specifically designed to send configuration commands to Cisco iOS devices. Okay, so the next one is the lines, and this is the actual line of configuration we want to send to the device. We are setting an interface description that says configured by Ansible. The dash here just means this is one item in a list. You could send multiple lines if you wanted to. Finally, the parents line. This is really important as parents tells Ansible where in the device's configuration this command should go. In this case, we are saying put the above config line under the interface configuration section. So Ansible will generate this on the device. Interface gig ethernet 01 followed by description configured by Ansible. Now let's move into the second task, which is somewhat similar to the first one. The difference is that we are going to use a different command to send on a different interface. So under the lines, for example, we are using an IPv4 address configurations to be sent to the parents interface, which is interface gig ethernet 0 slash 2. Finally, the save underscore win key is a neat and good practice as this tells Ansible to save the configuration only if something was actually changed. It's a good way to avoid unnecessary writes to the device's memory. So as you can see, this style allows network engineers to focus on what they want to achieve rather than getting bogged down by complex syntax or programming logic. YAML makes these tasks feel more like structured instructions than like programming code. Now that we have seen what YAML is and what it looks like, let's dive deeper into a really important question. Why do we actually use YAML, especially in networking and automation and DevOps? You see, the main reason YAML became so popular is because humans like you and me needed a way to describe information in a way that's both easy to read and easy for machines to understand without feeling like we are writing complicated programming code. Let's break it down step by step. One of the biggest reasons we use YAML is because it's simply easier to read and write than other formats like JSON or XML. No curly braces like JSON and no opening and closing tags like XML. It looks more like a checklist or a set of organized notes. You can glance at a YAML file and immediately get an idea of what it's doing without needing to mentally decode it. For example, when you are managing dozens or hundreds of devices, being able to quickly read a YAML file to see settings or device names saves you a lot of mental energy compared to digging through a heavy XML or JSON structure. YAML forces you to use indentation to show relationships between pieces of data. If something belongs under something else, you simply indent it. No confusing syntax, just a logical visual structure. So think of it like outlining your thoughts when planning a project. You've got the main topic, the subtopics, and then the details. When we automate tasks, especially in networking, we often need to send structured information to scripts, APIs, or automation engines. YAML makes it extremely easy to define a list of devices and describe interfaces. It also outline configuration steps, set variables, or options without worrying about code syntax. Even though YAML is simple, it's very flexible. You can define simple values like names or IP addresses. You can define complex nested structures like entire network topologies, for example. You can even reference other YAML files to keep your work clean and modular. This flexibility makes YAML perfect for both small automation projects and large enterprise grade systems. If you look around today, YAML is everywhere. Ansible Playbox uses YAML. Kubernetes Deployment Files also uses YAML. GitHub Actions Workflows uses YAML. Once you know YAML, you are opening doors to work across many fields. Because YAML has less noise, no extra samples like curly braces or colons or commas everywhere, it's easier to spot mistakes. So miss a comma in JSON and it breaks. Forget a closing tag in XML and it also breaks. In YAML, you mainly just need to keep an eye on indentation, which is very natural once you get the hang of it. 
This one is subtle, but really important. YAML feels closer to English or any natural language you speak than traditional programming syntax. You are writing simple keys and values. For example, host name, you can give it a value of router one, for example, or IP address, and you give it the value 10.0.0.1. It almost feels like filling out a form. There is a natural flow to it, which makes learning and using YAML less intimidating for people who are newer to coding or automation. All right, let's pause for a moment and imagine you are writing a Python script to connect to a few network devices. Sounds straightforward, right? But without YAML, things can quickly get messy. Now, let's see the difference YAML can make, turning that same task into something cleaner, more scalable, and much easier to maintain. So before you know about YAML, you might hard code your devices directly inside the Python script, like the code you see on the screen. It works, but it's messy if you have a lot of devices. If you need to add or remove devices, you have to change your Python code each time, which isn't ideal, especially if you are handing this script to someone else. Now, instead of hard coding, you can move the device data to a YAML file, and let's say the file called devices.yaml. And now your Python code becomes much cleaner. Now, what happens? If you want to add a device, you only edit the YAML file, not the Python script. If your customer or colleague wants to change devices, they don't even have to know Python. Your code becomes more flexible and reusable and also professional. While YAML is loved for its simplicity and readability, it's not perfect. There are a few important drawbacks you really need to know about, especially if you are planning to use it. So the first big drawback is the fact that YAML relies purely on indentation. This means that even a tiny mistake like using tabs instead of spaces or not lining things up properly can completely break your YAML file. And to make it a little bit trickier, YAML parsers often won't give you super clear error messages. So if you have an extra space somewhere, it might take you a while to figure out why your file isn't working. The second drawback, when YAML files are small, they are beautiful, clean, readable, and super easy to understand. But once you start creating large, deeply nested structures, for example, automating a whole data center's worth of devices, the YAML file can get really messy and confusing. Suddenly, you are starting at dozens of indentation levels, trying to figure out where you've made the mistake or which section belongs to which device. So the third drawback is security risks, and this is a bit more advanced, but important to know. Some YAML parsers can be vulnerable to certain attacks if the YAML file contains malicious content. For example, improperly handled YAML can allow attackers to execute code or access system files if they manage to inject dangerous payloads into a YAML file. However, in the most basic networking use cases, this isn't a huge worry. But is something to keep in mind if you are building larger, more sensitive systems. So the fourth drawback is the fact that YAML tries to be smart in how it interprets data types, but that can backfire. For example, if you write yes or no or on and off, YAML might automatically treat those as Boolean true or false value instead of strings, even if you meant them to just be normal words. You have to be extra careful with quoting values properly, otherwise you can get an unexpected result. Finally, while YAML is fantastic for humans to read and write, it's a little heavier for machines to parse compared to JSON. If you are building a very high speed automation system that's exchanging massive amount of data, JSON might be faster and more efficient for the machine to handle. YAML is designed for human comfort, not necessarily raw performance. That's it for this video. I hope this was informative for you. And if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and turn notifications so you never miss our future tutorials and tech insights. If you have any questions, comments, feel free to drop a comment below. And remember, consistency and hands-on practice are key to success. So stay curious, stay inspired, and until next time, peace.